What's up guys, Julian Gattel here, and today we are on set of Chillin' with Julian, episode seven, quarantine edition. We're in a global pandemic, and I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. We wanted to continue this inspiration virtually. The mission is interviewing inspiring individuals to inspire others. I'm thankful because today we have guest, musician, singer, songwriter, Kendall Conrad. Chillin' with Julian, episode seven, quarantine edition, starts right now. Let's go. What's up, y'all? My name is Kendall Conrad. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kendall Conrad and on Facebook, facebook.com slash Kendall Conrad Music. We're here on episode seven of Chillin' with Julian, the quarantine edition. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, Kendall, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Well, thank you for joining me on Chillin' with Julian, episode seven. During this crazy time, we're all quarantined. Um, how's everything on your end? Where are you at? So I am quarantined with my parents in Pennsylvania and considering everything happening, everything's fine and we're all healthy and that's all that matters right now. Um, I'm getting super antsy not working. Uh, I don't like vacation and off time anyway. So this is like a forced unpaid vacation. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not loving the not working, but yeah. Are you, um, you're in New York, right? Yes, uh, suffer New York. Um, it's very different out here um, from being in the city back and forth, but I've been quarantined for uh, a couple weeks now. And I think during this time, it's been a lot of reflecting, a lot of seeing um, that we have opportunities to do the things we didn't have to do, like workouts, family time, and just being um, grateful for, you know, the things that um, we didn't really recognize before. but. Uh, I'm grateful to have you on Chillin' with Julian episode seven. Um, funny or cool background story of um, the correlation. Uh, I think it was one of us, we followed each other on Instagram a while back and I had came across your uh, interview video by um, ASR Media, uh, specifically Ashley Russo, who I um, did a job shadow for back in college, I guess October, 2017 and you guys were in the building of Factory LLC, which is also the place I did an internship at um, <laughs> after college. So it's, it's really cool that we have a lot of the same affiliates and um, you being in the PA area, that's actually the majority of where I grew up. So I'm thankful to, you know, shout out ASR and um, Ashley, I'm grateful to uh, interview you. Well, it's, it's it's crazy when you reached out to me because I told you I've been we've been following each other, and then when you were telling me all these ties that we had, I was like, what? Like such a small world. Like it's crazy. So cool. And um, your music is definitely amazing. I, I got a chance to listen to a couple of your singles, and um, a lot of them are stuck in my head to this day. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, that's a good thing and I'm, I'm grateful to interview you the the goal is interviewing inspiring individuals to inspire others and uh, I definitely see you as an inspiring individual so I'm looking forward to getting to know about your music getting to know about your journey and uh, sharing some inspiration for people out there quarantined and um, watching our content well thank you so much for asking me to do this it's gonna be fun I'm looking forward to it all right let's get right into it um, so where are you originally from? I think we kind of answered this one. Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Pottstown, wow. What's that yeah. vibe like in Pottstown? Um, it's not a one stoplight town, so it's not that tiny, but it's also not very big either. So I just, I tell people it's just suburban. Um, you know, we have grocery stores and the movie theater and all that stuff, the mall. Um, and you know that's that's about it there's not much going on here other than it's a great spot to get to philly and mm -hmm. to get to the lehigh valley and like all the the areas around like it's a gr it's like right in the middle of everywhere so it's a great yeah so it's a great spot to be i think that's awesome well I, i'm grateful um because i had the opportunity to like 
get a feel from for that area, you know? Um, I stayed in the Bethlehem, Freemansburg area, but going to Pottstown and just different areas, Quakertown and um, mm. the Lehigh Valley, just in general, it, it's a different feel than anywhere else. You can't really match it to anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree with you on that. It, especially um, like Bethlehem, Allentown area, there are parts of it that do be have that city feel. It's like a small town city feel. Like it's very cool. I love that whole area. Same here. Uh, so how long have you been doing music and how did you get started in the first place? So uh, I taught myself how to play guitar in high school. And before that, I had just always been a singer. Um, I didn't really have any interest in uh, being the master at an instrument if that makes any sense. I didn't have any interest in songwriting. That was never um, the driving force behind what made me be an artist. I always just wanted to sing. That was always my thing. I wanted to get up on stage and sing. Um, so I was just always singing from when I was really little. There was no like, you know, enlightening, empowering experience that I found my voice or anything like that. Um, it's just, I, I always like to sing. It's very weird, kind of found me, maybe. Um, but I did play the saxophone from when I was in, <laughs> when I was in like elementary school. So that's random, but, um, and even now sitting here, I can still kind of sort of remember how to play. Um, but alto sax to be specific. Okay. But um, I picked up guitar because I wanted to be able to um, go out and gig by myself and I wrote songs because I wanted to be able to express myself and my emotions and my stories myself so I kind of just did it out of um, not wanting to need anyone and be independent so that if any that makes any sense that's very important you know when you have that opportunity to start doing your own thing it kind of makes you more you you know you're doing your own thing you're doing your gigs and um, picking up the guitar is definitely part of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was it was just easy then because it's like, do I want to play this gig? I don't need to ask, you know, whoever can you make it because I can't play piano or I can't play guitar. Or I, I, you know, I, I didn't want to, I just didn't want to have to need anybody really. <laughs> so it does, it makes it super easy now to go out and gig because it's just myself. 100%, I agree. Who are your first musical influences that you could remember? Uh, Whitney Houston's my number one forever and always. Um, she she just inspired me to be a singer. Um, I think she, I don't wanna like call out anybody else that I love, but I do think that Whitney has the best voice ever of like all artists ever. I just think she's flawless. Um, so I just, I always wanted to have that pure, emotional, clean vocal that she always had. Um, and then I, I wanted to take the songwriting of Taylor Swift, how great her songs were. And I wanted to merge them. So I was like, I, I still want to keep that, that amazing vocal quality of Whitney, but I want the songs to be my personal stories like Taylor does. Like I wanted to write about my life and my stories. So um, Taylor and Whitney are my two biggest influences, but like now I'll listen to, like I like Imagine Dragons and yeah. And I like the alt rock stuff, um, Ariana Grande. I love her stuff. I think she's got a cool vocal tone. Um, yeah. And like, I listen to, I listen to all sorts of stuff. So it, it like, it changes. That's awesome. Yeah. That vocal fusion, um, you got Whitney's amazing vocals and then you have Taylor Swift's amazing writing skills, fuse that up and that's great to have that influence, you know, it's a, a great combination right there. Yeah, I know. It's like, imagine if, if Whitney had written songs, like had that, that ability, like I wonder, I wonder if she ever tried to write, you know, I don't know. There's a couple clips of her playing piano on YouTube and I was like, I don't even know she could play piano. Super versatile. Yeah, but see, it's like it's all in the branding. So I guess they just wanted her, you know, in those gowns singing those big ballads and, and they didn't want her hiding behind an instrument. Not that Taylor hides behind the instrument, but 
Taylor's whole thing is songwriter. You know, she's out there with the guitar. So I've learned a lot even through them learning about artistry and what kind of artist I want to be um, and just being different. Cause I don't, there is a Taylor Swift and there is a Whitney and I don't want to be either of them. I want people to be like, yo, are you trying to be Kendall Conrad? Like, <laughs> I want that to be a thing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what that is and what that means right now. That's awesome. So you performed at countless venues. Uh, what about performing live makes you keep doing it? Um, I always wanted to be on stage when I was a kid and I'm super quiet and introverted, so I don't know why that is at all. Um, I just really like entertaining people, I think. Um, and so I never, I never wanted to just be a songwriter or, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to be on stage. So I don't, I don't know what it is about it that keeps me coming back, but I just like putting on a show and entertaining people. Um, I think it's fun and especially when people enjoy it, like even now with the Facebook lives. It's not a stage, but I'm still performing for people. Um, so there's something about, there I just said it, you don't even need to be on stage. Like I'm, I'm in my living room and I get as much out of it performing virtually as I do live at an, on an actual stage, isn't that weird? Um, so I don't know, it's just performing for people. I just, I love that. What do you want people to know about women in country music? And how do you want to represent? And what do you want women in country music coming up to know? Women in country music are amazing. And uh, most of them are like unheard, which is sad. Um, like now, if you asked, if you polled people, you know, who's your favorite artist in country music that's a woman right now? they'd probably say like four people and that's it. Like four women would be named. And it's just really sad because there's a lot of great songs being put out by women that just aren't being heard. Um, and there's different kinds of songs. There's ballads and fierce songs and party songs. And it's not just one generic thing. Um, and my advice to women in country music, it's, it's hard. <laughs> It's a really hard road and it's an uphill battle. And I don't even know if we've even gotten to the top at this point, but the fact that we're still fighting for it, I think is important because like me personally, I have stuff to say. Like I, I have stuff that I wanna say um, and how I want to represent the genre is just don't give up. Um, even if it's hard and no one's listening, you keep singing. So yeah, that's, that's my two cents. That's, that's incredibly important, primarily because if there's someone who's coming up, you know, in the industry and see you and you're going after what you believe in, that's inspiration for them because now they say, oh, these are things that are possible. And I'm pretty sure um, you've also seen uh, people who've like made a path for um, women in country music who just continue to top um, what people think and change the reality and trend set, you know, mm -hmm. they things that open up doors for many people to come. So I think that's awesome that you continue that fight because you're opening doors for people behind you as well. Yeah, I, that's a, that's a great way to put that. And you know, what's also interesting, women have to be very, um, versatile in that the guys can all kind of, no offense guys, y'all can put on a t-shirt and jeans and your baseball cap and you can all look like that and you can all have deals and you can all get airplay and you can all get signed. And then with women, it's like, we have a brunette girl who's kind of urban already, sorry. Or we have a girl who's cute and has fun pop country songs, who's a blonde. We have her already, so you know, we have one, so we can't sign you. And it's like, you have six men on this label that look exactly the same and they all kind of sound the same. You have six of them. You're telling me you can't sign me because you have one girl? 
and it's it just sucks yeah and i i definitely think the the continue to fight and the continue to really break um what people think about the path um will ultimately allow for improvement in in that industry mm -hmm. i hope so <laughs> what drives you okay mission slash goal and what do you want to be remembered for okay what drives me that these are some tough you're hitting me with some tough questions here <laughs> Um, I don't know if I have a fear of failure or what the deal is, but success, not necessarily money or fame, just being successful, um, that really drives me a whole lot. I don't know if it's uh, my need to be a perfectionist or what the deal is, but just hitting a milestone for me, I get great pleasure out of that. Um, like come to your senses, my first single just hit 200,000 streams. That was, that was amazing. You know, it's not a million, but for me, 200,000, that's pretty darn good. Um, so that in itself drives me, like I wouldn't hit 300,000 now. Um, so it's strange that success in itself is satisfying for me. And then like we mentioned earlier, just playing for people drives me. Um, wanting to do it again, wanting to do it over and over. Uh, that drives me. So um, the second part of your question, the goals. I would really love to, to consistently tour like the country, not just Pennsylvania, not just Nashville. Um, I would love to have like a show in a different state every three days and be on a tour bus or have to get on a plane and you know be skyping my parents and saying oh i'm in texas tonight um so that's always been the the goal for me because i love to travel um and so taking my my love of traveling and putting that with my love of performing i just i i want that more than hearing my song on the radio um which i know a lot of people say but for me um obviously that would be great but the uh the, the need to go out and be on tour, that that's more important to me um, than getting on the radio right now. I'm thankful to um, interview you and learn about everything you've done. And at the end of the day, someone could look at this and really find a lot of inspiration from it and um, just learn more about you. Um, so at the end of Chilling with Julian, uh, we like to have guests share their art and would you be so kind to play a song for us i yes i would love to and thank you so much for doing these because without you we could not share the inspiration Ooh. so <laughs> you're like the messenger right i appreciate that so yeah, thanks so much. What are we gonna be playing today? All right, so am I playing one song or two songs here? Um, what your heart says. <laughs> Ooh, well, I could do I could do t both of my songs that are available for streaming. All right. So this is the first one that I put out, and it's called "Come to Your Senses."
ditch this crowd. Get out of your head. And that one was the one that got, it's at over 200,000 on Spotify. And we know why. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, that's a big number for like a first single. Spotify. Yeah. All right. And then this is, uh, this is like my anthem song. This is called Leader of the Pack. Senses. 
both amazing singles. Thank you so much for being on Chilling with Julian, episode seven, quarantine edition. Although we're quarantined, we're still doing what we love. That's how you know we love it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people can find this inspirational and really see and learn more about you as an artist and looking forward to your single coming out. What date? May 22nd. Well, I'm, thank you. I'm appreciative. And um, thank you guys for tuning in to Chilling with Julian, episode seven, quarantine edition. Have a great day. And thank uh, you. Stay inspired. Thank you so much for sharing my story with your followers. I appreciate that. Thank and truly. You. And I can feel that you love doing this. So I, I am drawing inspiration from you right now. Um, so again, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you, Kendall. And uh, looking forward to that new single coming out. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Thank you.